Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make. I'm going to do this by sharing with you how much we made by selling put and call options as well as collecting a few dividends last month in December. I'm also going to talk through two of my favorite option trades we did last month and give you an update on our leap option position in Disney. This will show you how you can use options to generate awesome cash flow and returns every month in your account. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click that subscribe button and bell notification so you'll get an alert as soon as we release a new free stock and option trading educational video. You'll also be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. Here you see a list of every option trade we did last month in December. The blue boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. Each one of these trades netted us at least a 78% annualized return non-leveraged. We'll discuss the trades we did in Disney using Leap Options, DLR, which is a real estate company that you have probably used every single day, as well as Walgreens. Walgreens is probably a store that every single one of us have been in over the past year. At the bottom in the red box, you see that as a result of selling options, we pocketed $10,259. In the orange box, you see that trading commissions cost us $51.20. And in the green box at the bottom right, you see that we pocketed $736.20 in dividends, as well as the breakdown of how much dividends we received from each one of those companies. In all, we pocketed $10,944 from selling options and collecting some dividends. That's real cash that we can use to pay bills, to reinvest, or even to go on a vacation. It's our cash to keep. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 22.6% annualized cash on cash return. If you calculate the return on the $86,157 margin requirement, it equates to a 152.4% annualized return on margin. What are the challenges that you face in becoming a successful option stock trader? In the comments below, please let me know what your biggest challenges are. I'm looking for ways that I can help you become a more profitable option and stock trader. And stay tuned until the end of this video where I'll give you an update on a position I know many of you are interested in, my Disney Leap option position. I'm excited to show you how we've added to our infinite return in the last month. Let's start with our lowest returning trade of 78% annualized non-leverage return and digital realty, ticker symbol DLR. Digital Realty has a portfolio of data centers in 12 countries. These data centers provide secure, continuously available environments for companies to store and process important electronic information, such as transactions and digital communications. Data centers can also serve as hubs for internet communications in major metropolitan areas. The key components of a data center can be seen here. They include servers, network equipment, cooling systems, electrical power systems, as well as other components. Data centers consume a lot of power to keep the servers running and the room's temperature under control. Most likely, you've used Digital Realty's properties today and you may not even realize it. As you can see here, their top 20 customers include IBM, Facebook, Oracle, Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, CenturyLink, and Uber. Here's the trade we did. At the top line, you see that on December 16th, we sold to open the January 15th 125 put option. For that, we received $2.60 per share. The reason why I felt good selling a put option here is that as you can see on the left chart, the daily chart, DLR had been finding support for several days around that area. And it had received nice buying pressure, as you can see at the bottom under volume in the white rectangle. It had already dropped over the previous seven months, as you can see by the yellow arrow, from around $160 per share down to $130 per share. That's a big drop for a solid company when there's no real catalyst. I felt even better about selling that put option here because as you can see in the chart on the right, the weekly chart, it was approaching the red 200 moving average line. Notice that earlier in the year, in March, when it briefly approached and penetrated through that moving average, it quickly rebounded. Because of these factors, I felt sure that if DLR penetrated through this 200 moving average again, it would rebound and thus produce a profitable trade for us. Here's what happened. As you can see here at the yellow arrow on the daily chart, the next day that we did this trade, DLR took off until it reached the peak of around 140. We see at the bottom in the yellow box that there was nice buying support in this stock. 
At that point, the January 15th $125 put option that we sold for $260 per share was only worth $0.45 cents per share. So we bought to close the position out on December 24th. This trade put a net of $2.15 per share in our pocket over the eight days we were in the position. If we annualize that return, it equates to a non-leveraged 78% annualized cash on cash return. How were we able to pinpoint this was a good time to enter this position? Well, that's a story for another video. If you'd like to see it, the link is above and it'll be in the description below if you want to check it out when you're finished with this video. It's entitled Multiple Time Frame Support and Resistance. Next, I'm going to give you all the details on a trade we did last month that produced a 134% non-leveraged annualized cash on cash return and a return on margin that's almost embarrassing because it's so good. But if you're liking the video, please do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it lets me know that this is the kind of content you want me to continue making for you. And stay tuned until the end of this video where I will give you an update on our Disney Leap Call Option position. I'm excited to show you how you can use Leap Options to generate awesome cash flow and returns. The next trade I want to share with you is in Walgreens, officially known as Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA. Walgreens roots go back to 1849. It's one of the world's largest pharmacy retailers and drug distributors. They operate over 18,000 pharmacy stores around the world. They operate a portfolio of retail store brands including Walgreens and Rite Aid, as well as global health and beauty product brands. In addition to its retail business, which most of us have probably seen, Walgreens owns distribution centers that deliver drugs to pharmacies, doctors, health centers, and hospitals. It's one of the world's largest purchaser of prescription drugs and other health and well-being products. Walgreens has grown its dividend for 44 years in a row. This is a company that I use on a monthly basis and I really like the price you can buy it at or sell options at for an awesome return. Here's the trade we did that produced a 134% non-leveraged annualized cash on cash return last month. On December 30th, we sold to open the January 15th $39 put options. For that, we received $1.23 per share. Here's what the charts looked like when we entered that trade. Notice here on the left chart, the daily chart, where the white arrow is, that Walgreens looked like it was trying to find support at that green 50 moving average. Then look over at the chart on the right, the weekly chart, it again looked like it found support just under $35 per share. If you look at the bottom of the chart in the yellow box, you see that there had been some nice buying pressure over the previous several months. Those factors coupled my belief that Walgreens was selling at a discount based on the quality of the company, it helped me feel comfortable selling that $39 short put option. But what happened? As you can see on the daily chart, Walgreens almost immediately took off and reached a high of around $47 per share. Notice the volume on the bottom in the white rectangle. There was tremendous buying pressure in Walgreens. I did not want to risk this trade turning against us, so I decided to close the short put options out by buying to close them out on January 6th. This cost us 23 cents per share as you can see here. We were in this trade for seven days and pocketed a dollar per share. If you calculate the annualized return that we received over those seven days, it equates to a 138% non-leveraged cash on cash annualized return. If you're curious what our return on margin requirement was, here you see that the margin requirement for this position was $2,775. If you annualize the return on margin, it equates to a 564% annualized return on margin. Not bad for a business whose stock has been getting hammered over the past two years. If you like more information on how you can do trades similar to this, even if you have a small account, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled How to Trade Options Using a Small Account when you're finished with this video. At the beginning of this video, I told you I would give you an update on our Disney Leap Call Option position. I don't buy options very often, but this is one of the few techniques I use to buy options. And you'll see why I love using Leap Options so much. First, I want to share with you how much we are out of pocket on this Disney Leap option position. I know there's a lot going on on this spreadsheet, so let me talk you through it. These are all the trades we have done since March 20th when we began this Leap position in Disney. As you can see at the bottom right in the purple box, we've reached a point where this position hasn't cost us even a single penny. Right now, we've actually received $745.49 for owning this Leap position. So from this point on, as long as this position remains profitable, we have an infinite return. 
because the cost of this entire position has been covered by selling call options against the long January 2023 $110 leap call option that we own. If you look at the blue box at the top, you see that we first purchased the January 2022 $85 leap call option on March 20th of 2020. On over to the far right, under the cost to buy, you see that that cost is $21.69 per share. We then rolled that leap option out and up, as you can see under the sale date, on November 19th of 2020. If you follow the blue curved arrow, you see that when we sold that January 2022 $85 leap call option, we used some of the proceeds to buy the leap call option in the red rectangle, which expires on January of 2023 at the 110 strike price. That option cost us $43.77 per share. Since we entered this position back in March of 2020, we have also been selling short-term call options against the long leap option that we own. The result is that we have covered our cost and put an extra $745.49 into our pocket. Now, I'm actually trying to work my way out of the short leap position that we sold back on March 20th of last year at the same time that I bought the long leap call position. The reason why I sold that leap is because back in March of last year, volatility was sky high. So I sold that leap option, which at that point was $65 out of the money to help me pay for some of that volatility that I was paying for in my leap option that I bought. Now I had no idea that Disney would come roaring back as fast as it has. So now I'm trying to work my way out of that second short call option, the January 2022 150 leap. I'm looking for Disney to come down to try and fill the gaps that is made around the 160 mark and also maybe even the one around the 130 mark. The $130 gap, it'll be more of a challenge to fill in the near term because it'll have to break through both the 50 and 200 moving averages on the daily chart to do that. But with my knowledge of gaps that over 91% of the time, up gaps and companies like Disney get filled, I feel fairly confident that it'll come back down to at least try to fill the gap around 160. If that happens, then I'll buy to close this naked January 2022 $150 leap call option and pay for it by selling to open a new put in Disney. If you'd like more information on this trade and how we use leap options to produce awesome monthly cash flow returns, check out the video series in the link above in the description below entitled Leap Options. If you'd like to receive live alerts of all our exact trades, consider becoming a patron at the link in the description below. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below for more of my option and stock trading secret tips and strategies in the video series entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.